Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We're welcoming back Kimberly Carney onto the show, who I am proud to announce is an is finally a published author in our best-selling business leaders book series. Um, we find we've been working on this book for a long time, and I'm thrilled to get it out there and to, and to promote it with Kimberly. And I got another big announcement we'll get to, which is um, I no, I have to start with this. This is a big deal. So um, Fashion Group Internationals entrepreneur of the year. I realized that you you just uh, received that award recently, Kimberly. Hey, first, welcome back. But I couldn't even, I had to get that out first. Welcome back. I did back. last week. It was such an honor to not only be part of their event, but to be recognized for my path as an entrepreneur. Oh, your path is an entrepreneur and you are on fire. We're going to talk about today the wires and really what you've done to grow and scale. And I know three three different brands under there, three apps in the app store. We're going to we're going to break these down, but I know you're known as, uh, but the company's overall known as the wires, so excited to get into that. Of course, we're going to talk about the book and really the journey of a startup to CEO was the title of your of what you wrote. Um, but before we get into all that, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So you know the drill. Um, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Kimberly, what mission matters to you? Mission to make an impact across our prospective industries. It's very important to me that we're continuing to innovate and make an impact. Yeah. Yeah. It's great having you on and uh, love bringing mission-based entrepreneurs on the line to share, you know, why they do what they do and how they do it and really what we can all learn from that. So um, first off, I just have to circle back to this Entrepreneur of the Year Award. So how do you feel? I mean, tell me a little bit more about the night. You know, it's crazy is back when I first opened a store, I um, went to my first Fashion Group International event in New York. And it was a big deal to even wow. get invited because there were celebrities there. And and I remember watching the award ceremony thinking, well, I wonder what it would be like to be a rising star. And then in 2020, when we were just Fashwire, Fashwire won new re- the Rising Star Award for New Retail Concept. Mm. And it was really exciting to be part of that. And then we continued to grow our business to beauty and mm. then followed that with a Home and core with Costa Wire. Mm -hmm. And Fashion Group International has always been a great partner for us. You know, we support their events. We support, I've been on their podcasts. It's just really exciting. And a new surprise is they asked me to join their board of directors. So I'm officially on the board of Fashion Group International. Oh my gosh, congratulations. What an amazing story. And I, I mean, I, I've known you for, for a bit now and uh, I know you work hard as, as a founder and, and as a CEO. So um, you deserve it. Like it's great. And I'm, I'm excited yeah. to see and continue to watch your journey and success. Um, but I, I don't want to assume, so the show's grown quite a bit, and I don't want to assume all of our new listeners maybe caught some of our previous work today, Kimberly. So maybe just give an overview and kind of a breakdown of The Wires. The so wireless platforms are both, or they're all three two sided marketplace. So we are B2B, a data hub for the brands to help mm-hmm. them see what's resonating with consumers, to help them make better production decisions and mm-hmm. sell for full price. And really, we want to reduce waste and help these brands sell their products um, Mm. just by getting discovered on our platform. On our B2C side, we're consumer driven where we have this immersive swipe voting where swipe left if you like it, swipe right if you don't, very Mm -hmm. Tinder-esque. And we give that data back to the brands. So it's exciting for consumers because they get to come in and they get to be an influencer and they get to Mm -hmm. have a say in what's resonating with them. And we build that incredible community. Yeah. And and one of the things that you have really built is a community. And maybe just to get go a little bit further, I, I do want to spend some time on the book to build out this story. Um, the title, again, of what you wrote was Journey of a Startup CEO. So um, you talk about starting the wires. You talk about maybe some of your, your background as well in the music tech industry. Maybe give us a little bit more about your background and how you got interested in entrepreneurship. 
after college, I took a job at AT AT&T Wireless. And Mm -hmm. back in the day, um, they were focused on the technology TDMA for the cell phone. So Mm -hmm. I was part of their marketing team. And I traveled the world actually um, building conferences and events. And my keynote speakers were people like Nelson Mandela and, you know, different industry leaders around the world. And it was a great career for me to really understand marketing events, conferences, Mm -hmm. and really get an idea of really where I wanted to be. And the technology was Mm -hmm. what really fascinated me the most. After I was really ready to stop traveling so much, I Mm -hmm. found a job in the music industry um, called Discover Music. And Mm -hmm. I became their head of marketing. And we were, back in the day, we were the technology on Amazon where you could actually play the song sample. Mm -hmm. And it was really great. And I remember going to my CEO and saying, so what's my marketing budget? You know, you come from AT&T where you've got a big marketing budget (laughs) and you go to a startup and you're lucky if you can cash your paycheck, you know, the following (laughs) week. And he's like, zero. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can be creative. (laughs) So I actually, Billboard was really big at the time. And so I was able to get this on Billboard and I worked with the Amazon account back when Amazon was still small. Mm -hmm. And um, really it was a great, you know, career for me in the music tech Mm -hmm. industry. I still think we would have been iTunes had we not got sued by the labels, but um, we ended up selling to a company in Seattle. And then I went on to have Mm -hmm. two kids and um, after my second, I really wanted to get back into marketing and mm-hmm. started my own marketing company and a boutique hired me. And I yeah. got to go on a buying trip with her. And I remember walking into the showroom and these, I get butterflies to this day when I walk yeah. into a showroom. So I opened a store because I thought, mm-hmm. how hard can it be? And <laughs> I learned <laughs> that retail is not easy. So but 15 years later, I had a very successful store. But during that time, I really saw the problem where smaller brands wanted to be in my store and I would, you know, mm-hmm. spend a couple thousand dollars to have them in and they wouldn't sell as well next to like theory mm-hmm. and I am on first work and all these main brands. Mm-hmm. And I felt bad for them. And I started listening to their stories about how, how much they had to pay for, to exhibit, how much it costs to be in bigger retailers. Yeah. And, you know, I thought there's got to be a platform where everybody can sit together. That's low cost mm-hmm. and a solution to really help the consumer, help the consumer find the brand and really give that brand exposure to the um to the consumer and that is where we came up where i came up with fashwire so wow. and we we launched in 2000 the idea started around 2015 but mm-hmm. you, you know you go through um some startup pains and mm-hmm. I found my developer in 2017, and he's still our development partner today and a shareholder in the company. And we we launched in 2018 with Fashwire. We had about wow. 25 brands, and um, the bigger affiliates told me I'd never get brands. So we mm-hmm. took a team, went to the shows. I hired someone from the industry, and mm-hmm. we are now over 450 brands from about 45 countries. And wow. maybe even 50 countries now. So wow. it was great. And when the we, we were about 200 when the pandemic hit. And the pandemic mm. really proved our concept when retail shut down. So many brands that had said no to us reached back out and they mm. um, wanted to be on the platform. So during that year of 2020, not only did we have incredible press, but we grew mm. our brand, brand base, I think, to about 300 that year. Mm. And then um, my team came to me and said, we should do beauty. And I was like, yeah, no, the investors don't want you to do another vertical. You know, yeah. I don't think it'll work. I don't like know. Fashion's not hard enough, right? Exactly. And I got no tech. I know fashion. I don't, I don't, I, I don't like change. <laughs> and yeah. they, um, they convinced me. We got our developer involved and he mm-hmm. agreed we should do it. And we launched um, Glosswire in 2021 with about 50 mm-hmm. brands that we built behind the scenes based mm-hmm. on the traction of Fashwire. And now we're over 300 brands on Glosswire mm-hmm. um, from probably about 26, 27 countries. Mm-hmm. And then Casawire was actually an idea before the pandemic, but when the pandemic hit, we decided to hold off. Mm-hmm. It, you know, again, the team thought we should do home decor. So we were lucky enough to get Amanda Smith from Selling Sunset to join our advisory board mm-hmm. to advise us. And that was really incredible because we were really able to build out 
home and decor in a way that's a little bit different than beauty and fashion. In fact, mm-hmm. we have really exciting things we're going to launch with our AI for like shop the room. Mm. And, but we launched Casa Wire in December, 2022, and we're about a hundred brands right now. Yeah. And, you know, it'll, it's, we're building it, you know, slowly, but surely. And it's been great though. It launched at number two in the app store and, mm. You know, and now it's continues, we're continuing to grow it. So that's really the story of the wires. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to pick a, a couple pieces of this apart uh, and definitely some of the things of, you know, what you attribute to some of the success that you've had with these brands. But before we get into this piece, um, I want to go back to the early days a little bit. And this is, this is a question I like to ask to, to, you know, founders who are really getting traction in their brand to kind of take a, a step back for a moment, because there's some people that have watched this that are maybe younger, or, or I should say earlier in their entrepreneurial career. Um, If you could go back and tell that, let's just say that Kimberly that was just getting started in in the fashion niche and and starting with that retail store, if you can give her some advice on maybe what's on the road ahead, um, what kind of things would you tell her? You can't do it yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Number one, you can't do it yourself. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, it's okay to pivot Mm -hmm. and it's really important to surround yourself with industry leaders who mm. are experts in their fields who know more than you do. We, as you know, as individuals, we don't know everything. I know where I excel. I know what I'm great at and I know where I don't. And I think really bringing this, the best thing I ever did was bring in this, an amazing group and advisory board in the early mm. days that continues to change and grow through today mm. and reaching out when I need help. Because it's okay to ask for help. Nine times out of 10, people want to help. They want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. And if you don't do it, then you still get, you get a no anyway. So mm-hmm. really just really be, you know, let your team and let your advisors and even your investors, let them be a part of the community mm-hmm. because transparency is important as well as getting that expert advice that you Mm -hmm. cannot come up with on your own always. Yeah. And so one of the things that you've, uh, great advice, by the way, and one of the things that you, you, you talk about as you tell your stories, you're like, yeah, I didn't want to necessarily do that, but yeah, we did it, right? Our team, like when it comes to launching the second brand, then the third brand, um, as, as a founder, like, how do you, how do you kind of know when it's like, yeah, I don't necessarily like change or want to do that new thing, but, um, but yeah, we're going to do that. Like, how do you know? Have you met my team? <laughs> yes, yes, actually, I have met some of them. I was at the Casa no Wire event, an and uh, they, they are amazing. <laughs> yeah, they don't take no for an answer very well. <laughs> um, you know, I I really just I really just weigh the pros and the cons, and I seek yeah. that advice. I I did reach out to a couple investors and mm-hmm. got their opinion. I you know my technology partner, Human Hamza, who is really my lifeline in this company, you know, really getting his input's important because, you know, their team's the one that has to carry this through with us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then my incredible team, they just, they, mm-hmm. they are just as passionate about this company as I am. And mm-hmm. I don't know that you always get that in a company. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and I really just think that, just trusting your instinct, just trusting your instinct, trusting their instinct and just the community you've built. And when enough people believe in it, then even if I'm not a hundred percent sure, you know, Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, it will work. um, I'm not afraid to take chances. I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm a risk taker by nature. So let's go, let's do this. That's our theme in the company. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So um, you actually, is another thing you mentioned is you actually had growth in the pandemic. So, you know, you, you, so maybe some of those brands that weren't, um, you know, as, as readily available to be on the platform, things like that, they, you know, are now turning and looking for a solution. You're there, you had a great brand, a great product. So then they, they were on board. Now, right now, just for context, for everybody that's listening or into this in the future or watching this in the future, we're recording this in May of 2023. Um, or we're live, um, you know, there's going to be some more changes going on in the economy and otherwise. And, you know, some people are going to maybe ease up and, you know, lift their foot off that gas pedal a little. Um, some are going to maybe accelerate. Some will stay even. 
Um, how do you, what kind of things would you say as we're going into the next, let's just say phase of the economy or what the next thing's going to be after the pandemic? And I say the next thing, by the way, cause there's always something, always something, but, um, what's the next thing for you? Like, how, how would you navigate that? You know, I think we, I've been smart in keeping us a small team. Yeah. And I think that has been important for not only bottom line, but this is a mighty team and, yeah. To, to navigate it with them, it doesn't feel like I have to navigate anything. Yeah. I, I, it, we can do this as a team. We can navigate through any economy. And we, like I said, we have an incredible mm-hmm. team of advisors. We have incredible investors that believe in us and this company mm-hmm. a thousand percent. So knowing that, I yeah. feel like we can navigate through anything. Yeah, it's great. But, uh, but it doesn't but it doesn't say that you can't predict and what we're seeing in this economy mm-hmm. now and to your point is we're seeing layoffs in the bigger tech yeah. companies, we're seeing companies close, we're seeing mm-hmm. banks collapse and we can't predict that. Yeah. So my attitude is tomorrow's a new day, we yeah. push forward. Yeah. And what about like, so we've been talking a lot about obviously the business side of it, but maybe from, from the brand perspective a bit, because I think you have just an extremely unique vantage point based on the quantity of brands, the quality of brands, the variation of brands, both in, in all three niches and spaces, by the way, how are you seeing maybe some of them kind of approach this, this next phase of the economy? Our brands are fantastic. Yeah. I'm really seeing a lot of social posts and really mm-hmm. seeing through Instagram and Pinterest and really seeing our brands use those social integr- mm-hmm. so those social tools to facilitate their brands forward. What's mm-hmm. so great about social media is you get a broader ad- audience mm-hmm. and it works for us. It works yeah. for our brands and our brands are also getting innovative. They're coming up with new mm-hmm. products. Their, their marketing campaigns are phenomenal. Yeah. It's really exciting to see what not only our brands are doing, but what the community at large is mm-hmm. from, whether it's celebrities to our brands, to influencers, it's it's exciting to watch mm-hmm. whether it's TikTok, Instagram, or Pinterest. Yeah, and one of the secret sauces, and and I'm saying this um, because at least from my perspective, as as I've watched you and observed in the wires, um, is when you use the word community, you mean it. Like I see it. I see the community around the products, from whether it's the brand side, whether it's obviously the people using the apps, all these things. Um, like, what is that word or that like? How do you approach that community question? How do you approach community building from your perspective? I, community building to me is all about collaboration and partnership. Mm-hmm. You know, our brands, we co- we continuously call our brands, our brand partners, and mm-hmm. we, we, we showcase them on our Instagram. We highlight mm-hmm. their backgrounds. We highlight the founders in our lives and we do these fast talks mm-hmm. or beauty talks or even Casa talks now to really show the community who mm-hmm. the brands are, what drives them and mm-hmm give them that visibility they might not have. Yeah. And now for a, um, like for a company like yours, which is a technology company or, or ours, which is a media company. Um, sometimes that concept of building a community, like it wasn't always done. Right. So if you're thinking about like your, your app in an app store, there's not necessarily a community behind it or that component. So I know there's some other, so I believe you're extremely innovative in what you're doing. And the fact that you're even approaching it from that community mindset, um, for the maybe other tech entrepreneurs out there who haven't approached the, like like their business or their you know their app or whatever it is right um, from that community like perspective, what kind of things would you tell them or tips would you give them on just community building if they haven't really gone down that route? I think one thing that we did with we're a paid app and. Mm-hmm. Part of the reason we are paid up is because we get to um, donate to philanthropic causes by doing a dollar Mm. download with our apps. And we highlight a new charity each month. And that builds a whole new community because, you know, we're sharing, we're speaking about the, the charity or the, you know, philanthropic organization that supports social causes. And then they're sharing us. And then we're capturing that community Mm -hmm. that drives that where their personal values get behind charitable organizations. And I think it's so important to be able to do that. And Mm. I'm super proud of that with our community. Mm. 
How do you look for, um, when when we're talking about community? I mean, you have different layers because you have obviously the the brand partners, right? You have the the, the community that's using the app, of course. Um, speaking on the for the brand partners, maybe a little bit longer here. Um, how do you look at who's going to or kind of evaluate or decide who's going to be a good brand partner, really a good fit for the platform? It's super important to us that they have, you know, a social following, that Mm -hmm. they've been in business for a year or two, Mm -hmm. that um, they obviously need to have a commerce program, a commerce site, because we direct, we're direct to consumer and Mm -hmm. we lead the consumer to their uh, e-commerce site to purchase Mm -hmm. the product. But really it comes down to, we like to look at luxury brands, niche Mm -hmm. brands, uh, up and coming founders. Um, we're, it's super important to us to really recognize everyone who has a beauty product that is relevant to the beauty mm-hmm. industry. Yeah. And so as you continue to add brand partners, as you continue to scale, you know, all three, including Casa Wire, um, what's actually, before I go there, um, maybe a little bit of an update at Casa Wire. I haven't, I've, I've, um, this is our first time talking in a long time. Like, how's everything going on that side of things? I know you're rocking and rolling on, on the other two, but how's Casa Wire going? Customer is great. You know, we launched in December as a soft launch. We really yeah. needed to get it out there to get community feedback so we could really mm-hmm. learn and understand what the home and decor market mm-hmm. wanted. So we really did have to take a step back in February to really evaluate how to push forward. Mm-hmm. We, we've highlighted decor as the main product that we want on the app, mm-hmm. and we are bringing emerging brands on. Mm-hmm. So it's great. But in the behind the scenes right now, we're developing Shop the Room through AI technology through our partner. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What what can you tell me about that? You know, I love breaking a story here. What what can you tell me? I won't, uh, I won't go too far, but you give me a little hint. <laughs> just you know, it, it's very similar to like you walk into a store and you mm-hmm. can shop the store. So this will be virtual, and you'll be able to shop the room, and shop product directly from the room it's in. Ah, oh, it's gonna be fun! Yeah, I can't wait to see that. I'm super excited, and we have Next. some exciting stuff with fashionware and glassware coming up too in the same area with our with AI and AR. Oh, do, do tell, do tell. Um, <laughs> well, sh- shop the floor for, you yep. know, fast wire and then glass mm-hmm. wire. I cannot talk about yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> but All right. It, it, you know, I gotta <laughs> it, 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 we, next, next podcast. <laughs> okay. You know, I got to get what I can get from you. Can't believe I know. You have, I have you on the line. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, well, Kimberly, um, first off, I am uh, thrilled and excited to continue promoting this book with you. Um, well, for all the audience, everybody watching, like we'll have links, of course, in the show notes, all that good stuff. So you can pick up a copy. So I um, uh, definitely want you to do that. But Kimberly, if people are interested in learning more about the platform, I mean, of course, they can download from the app store. But just in general, how do people get involved with with the community and really connect with the wires and the brands? can download the apps on iOS on the, at the App Store and Google Play. So Fashwire, Glosswire, and CasaWire. And we also have websites as well. Mm-hmm. Um, our social handles are at Fashwire, at Glosswire Beauty, and at CasaWire Home. And we'd love to have you follow us, join us, and download the app. Fantastic. And we'll put all that information in the show notes. So again, our, our audience can just click on the links and, and download the apps. Um, and speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging with the platform, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, you know, why they do what they do and what really gets them fired up to go out into the marketplace and make a difference. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, we welcome you hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Kimberly, really, as always, it's a pleasure working with you. I'm looking forward to the next time we get to do this. But thank you again for coming on the show. And by the way, congrats again on Entrepreneur of the Year. Come on. And joining the board, too. I didn't know that piece of it. You're, you're, you're on fire. And I'm so happy to support you and to get the message out. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. And I really love working with you and your team.